Okay, so we're still building tables of half reactions here, and it's the same sorts of lists where they give us two species that meet, and the one with a positive charge typically is going to try to take electrons from the other, and then the right-hand side tells you how did that go? Did they succeed or not? So, in this first reaction we have L2+, plus. these are made up chemicals for the most part, trying to take electrons from K, and it succeeded apparently because L's oxidation number went down, that means it gained electrons, and K lost electrons, which is why its oxidation number or its charge went up. So what that tells us is L was able to take electrons from K, which means on our list, L should be listed higher than K. L is better at attracting electrons or fighting over electrons than K is. You could think of this as L and K had a fight and L won because it walked away with the electrons. The next thing we see is K and N meet. N is the positively charged one which will try to take electrons from K, but it couldn't do it. No reaction actually took place. So N tried to take from K and could not. That tells me that N is lower than K. This is like a failed robbery. N tried to rob K, but couldn't do it. That tells us N is weaker than K. Now, K meets another new thing, M. And K tries to take electrons from M, and it does. K's oxidation number goes down. That means K gained electrons, so K is higher up than M. And that's actually a problem, because if K is higher than M, M could be here, between K and N, or M could be the absolute bottom. I'm not sure which at the moment, so right now we don't exactly know what to conclude from this third line, so I'll, I'll leave these notes there and hopefully that'll become clearer in a moment. This fourth line may clear it up, if not we may have to circle around and look at this one again at the end. Okay, here we have M meets N, and M takes electrons, apparently. M is able to take from N, which means M is higher than N, which means this is correct, and that is not. So our hierarchy is L, K, M, N. Now, that's not quite enough for a proper answer in these questions. Ideally, you should make like a miniature oxidation or redox table like you have in your data book that shows the reactions and has all the species in it. So for L, the highest one on our list, we go from L2 plus to L0, and your reduction reaction should be L2 plus 2 electrons turns into L. This is just like what they look like in the data book, where you have something plus electrons equals something else. That's our L line, so we got that. K is next. Uh, K goes between K plus and K zero, so K plus plus an electron turns into neutral K. Next is M, which goes from M plus to M zero. I'll only need a single electron. And finally, N goes from yeah plus one to zero also, so. Electron turns into N. So there's our table the same way they look in the data book. Up here in the top left would be our strongest oxidizing agent. Weaker, 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 weaker. N would be our weakest oxidizer. N metal, or neutral N, would be our strongest reducing agent. And then as we go this way, we get weaker, weaker, weaker. And L is our weakest reducer. So. That ought to do it. Uh, okay, they're back to real elements for this one, but ones that I don't believe you'll find in the data book. We have manganese meets neptunium, and what happens? Manganese is trying to take electrons from neptunium, and how did that go? Yes, it did. Apparently, manganese is a stronger oxidizer, or is higher ranked 
or stronger than Neptunium. There's a lot of ways to think about this that all involve kind of a fight over electrons and who wins those fights. So manganese took from Neptunium, we got that. Indium meets gallium. This is trouble because we don't have indium or gallium in our list. If No matter what we find from this line, we're not going to know where to put it. So let's skip over this one for now. We'll do it last. Manganese meets gallium, and what happens? Manganese is trying to take electrons from gallium and can't. Manganese tried to rob gallium and couldn't. That means gallium is higher up than manganese. So I'll just scoot my list down here. Gallium is higher up than manganese. Right? Because MN tried to take electrons from it and couldn't do it. Now that we have that, let's try this middle row again. Because now they're talking about gallium, and at least we know where gallium is. Now we've got some kind of point of reference. This story is indium tries to take electrons from gallium, and it does, because indium goes from plus two down to zero. That means indium gained electrons. It must have stolen them from the gallium. So it looks like indium is even higher up than gallium is. It should be at the very top. So there's our rough rankings that we use just to get, get an order. And now if we write them as a table, Indium is our top row, and we have indium 2 going to indium metal. I n 2 plus, because it's 2 plus, it needs 2 electrons. That turns it into indium metal. Gallium is next, 3 plus down to 0. Gallium 3 picks up 3 electrons and turns into gallium metal. Manganese is next, that goes from plus two down to zero. And Neptunium is at the very bottom. Neptunium goes from three plus down to zero. So Neptunium picks up three electrons and turns into Neptunium metal. And as usual, the strongest oxidizer is on the top left and then they get weaker as we go down. Neptunium ion is our weakest reduce, sorry, weakest oxidizer. <laughs> Bottom right corner, we have neptunium metal, the strongest reducing agent. Best at giving away electrons. At another way to think of it, on our list here, we were saying neptunium always loses when there's a fight over electrons. The more positive way to say that is neptunium is really good at giving away electrons. And then the reducers get worse and worse and worse until we get to our weakest reducing agent. Indium is bad at giving away electrons because it's very good at fighting for them. If you try to take indium's electrons, it will probably beat you, and you won't end up getting any. So as a reducing agent, not good. It isn't good at giving away electrons. And one more time. Okay, they're back to mystery metals here. We don't most of these are not elements, or these aren't elements that behave like... This is the same symbol as nitrogen, but it's not behaving like nitrogen. This this could be phosphorus, I suppose, but I think these are supposed to be fictitious. Anyway, we don't need to know that to do the problem. M meets N. M with its positive charge is trying to take electrons from N, and apparently it does. So, on our quick summary, we'll say M is higher up than N. Next reaction, O tries to take electrons from N and can't do it. O tried to rob N and lost. O must be lower than N. And finally, P, with its positive charge, will try to take electrons from M and it does, so P is even higher up than M. P must be the very highest. So, quick answer, PMNO. Long answer, we have to make a table with P at the top. Goes from plus three charge down to zero. M is next, going from plus one to zero. This is 
sorry, that's an N that I wrote poorly. That's no N as in November. N goes from what? Plus 2 down to 0. Picks up two electrons, turns into N. And O is last. O2 plus down to 0. So, or we never do see the other state for oxygen, but presumably it's trying to get down to neutral. It's not oxygen, so this is just some metal they're calling O. But presumably it wants to get two electrons and become neutral O. So there's our list. Strongest oxidizer up here. Weaker, 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 weaker. O2 plus would be our weakest oxidizing agent. O is our strongest reducer because it's really good at losing electrons. In this table we'd say it always loses fights for electrons. Here we say it, it's always giving away electrons or people are always getting electrons from it is another way to say the same thing. And then the reducing agents get weaker and weaker as you go up and P is our weakest reducing agent.